Welcome to the Dr. April Jasper Show, relevant conversations for business owners of today. We are thrilled to have Cooper Vision as a sponsor of our show. Cooper Vision is a global leader in contact lenses, serving eye care professionals and lens wearers in over 130 countries with the widest range of prescription options. Cooper Vision can be trusted to have a contact lens that meets your vision, lifestyle, and budget needs. From one day to one month replacement lenses, there are lenses for most prescriptions in any lifestyle or budget. Cooper Vision brings us the first and only soft contact lens designed for myopia control and FDA approved to slow the progression of myopia in age appropriate children. Thank you to Cooper Vision for living your mission to provide innovative products to help millions of people see better each day. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Dr. April Jasper Show. I'm here with Dr. Justin Kwan, who is the uh, head of myopia management for Cooper Vision. And Justin, I love how we started our conversation last time because you mentioned that Cooper Vision has not just you working on this topic, but several doctors, which shows their commitment to this uh, really important cause. So I will let you take it from there. Tell us just a little bit. I know people know from our last conversation what you're doing there at Cooper Vision, but uh, give us a little bit of an intro about what you do, why you're so passionate about myopia. Yeah, it's become the probably the biggest, you know, as it's been said, public health thread of this yeah. current age and millennia, if you will. And I, I think about like every day and how many children are unfortunately getting worse, yeah. Um, yeah. but that we can actually make a change and uh, make an impact uh, in their lives. So as we think about, yeah, every generation that's growing up uh, yeah. in today's environment and how the practice of optometry kind of intersects with their lives. Like our profession is, uh, cannot be better suited uh, to right. really take this kind of bull by the horns and uh, really as the Cincinnati children's uh, you know, motto is change the outcome. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we talked a little bit about numbers in our last podcast, yeah. but I want to pretend that people kind of didn't hear that one yet. They're going to yeah. jump on now and they're going to yeah. listen to it yeah. after today. Yeah. But remind us again of the number of children we're actually talking about that yeah. we are uh, seeing in this mm-hmm. myopia sort of epidemic, I would say. Yeah, based on my Arvo poster a couple of years back, it's estimated about 19 and a half million uh, children with myopia. Mm-hmm. That's age five to 17. And we could all probably name a few kids that had myopia by age four even. Right. Uh, but that's related to the census data and the science. And I actually recently saw a Sydnexus presentation at OIS, the Ophthalmology Innovation Summit, where they had similar numbers, 18, 19 million kids. I think going back just a handful of years, people thought it'd be 15 million. Uh, But yeah, the number is, I think, much larger uh, based on what we see happening even around the world. Wow. You know, we sometimes think that, uh, well, if anyone's in practice, as long as me, you graduate. I graduated in 1995, so a long time ago. And in those days, we didn't know much about myopia management. All I knew mm-hmm. was that there was this one thing that we thought we could do that would make a difference called ortho K. So I started yeah. down that path and it turns out it does make a difference, mm-hmm. but we mm-hmm. didn't have all the data that we have today. So we have a lot of information, a lot of clinical research, a lot of studies, but still one of the biggest challenges is getting that the children to understand what is going on with their eyes. How do we engage those uh, children in a meaningful way? Yeah. And I know the best part of my job is just hearing what works and doesn't work in the parent conversation and how to keep it more simple, right? Like less is more. So when we think about like even a first or second grader, like listening to the eye doctor, hopefully that child's having fun. Um, But at the same time, like they might have this perception, maybe watching their parents or maybe their first grade classmate wears glasses and they don't have an idea yet about thicker glasses or anything about the retina. (laughs) Or maybe they don't even comprehend what blurry and clear looks like because they don't perceive a difference uh, side by side. Uh, So I like to talk to children in a way uh, that's, again, simple, and it's like three parts. So you can tell, hey, you know, Jake, your eye is too long, too fast, 
and getting weaker. Um, and that really is something that parents can understand as well, whether they have myopia or not. Because when you say the eye is too long, that doesn't sound good. Uh, when you say it's growing too fast, we might think of a car going 100 miles per hour. That's certainly not safe when something's yeah. grow, uh, going too fast. And then getting weaker, uh, no parent wants their child's eyes to get weaker, right? <laughs> That's good. I love that you have thought through and, and gained yeah. wisdom from other doctors that are doing this and how to keep yeah. the child engaged because ultimately they're the ones that have to stay involved for this to work. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned that some of those same things really stand out to parents as well, but is there yeah. anything different you do or say to get mm -hmm. parents involved because they're the ones paying the bills? Yep, for sure, for sure. And I think what happens a lot in the exam room, and we weren't taught this necessarily, I've kind of recently learned this, is that um, a lot of our patient education is falling, on, not onto deaf ears, but almost, almost as bad, yeah. right? Because it's a, we're creating a passive learning type of environment. And anytime, like, you know, patients of any age uh, hear new information, they're going to forget 90% of it within the first few days. Yeah. Another stat is patients will remember half of what we told them, but of that, they'll remember half of that incorrectly. And so we're really Ooh. kind of fighting upstream and really our backs against the wall when we're trying to get them to change behavior or adopt what we're prescribing. Um, so one great way to get them to be an active listener rather than passive is to create curiosity. Um, and just by asking Good. a simple question. So I think we can imagine a typical exam room environment where the child's in the chair, the yeah. mom or dad is in the corner chair, probably on their phone, answering some emails or just scrolling through their social media feed. And when you ask a question, you can say, hey, did you know some eyes are longer than other eyes? They're obligated to say yes or no. Wow. <laughs> and at that time, now the parent has to put their phone down um, because we asked their child a question, they're paying attention and they're like, what would that mean? That right. is my eye too long? Is their eye too long? <laughs> How long is your eye? And what does all that mean? And I think that really gets them into a space of, again, active learning so that they uh, are positioned to make a better decision. Yeah, you guys have a ton of uh, uh, brochures. I mean, even the the picture behind you, the screen behind you <laughs> reminds me of the brochures I have in my oh, office as well. So yeah. once I have that conversation, I never miss an opportunity to follow <laughs> it up with written materials as well. So I love that. But so what about the solution to the problem? How do we communicate that to parents? So we've now communicated the problem. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to talk about the solution? Yeah, but I've also learned that when our delivery of the information is not as good as we'd like, <laughs> the things that patients do is they'll look at price. Like, is this Ooh, yeah. too expensive for me? Um, is there value in there? So we have to back that truck up and then make sure we communicate the value first and foremost. And so when, you know, devices like contact lenses, they do one thing, which is vision correction. Um, we kind of translate that to say, hey, you know, all contact lenses and glasses will help your child see clearly, but that's for today and the next few months. Then their myopia will get worse and that's not good. <laughs> so thankfully, my site one day does two things. It's not going to only provide clear vision, but also keep the eye from getting worse so quickly. But that's not quite good enough, right, April? We have to contextualize it to the child's everyday life. So to take that a step further, it's going to help Jake see clearly in third grade and um, learn efficiently so he doesn't fall behind. <laughs> and then he's going to enjoy Taekwondo and basketball so much more, uh, maybe a little competitive advantage and, you know, can have a little fun with that. <laughs> um, can't promise that or good <laughs> grades. Uh, but now the parent can visualize their child in their everyday life rather than these abstract things of clear vision and keep this from getting worse so quickly. We've now contextualized yeah. We are grateful to have OcuSoft as a sponsor of our show. Since 1986, OcuSoft has served the community with a unique selection of proprietary brands, from dry eye care and protection with Retain line of artificial tears to eyelid hygiene with OcuSoft lid scrub eyelid cleansers essential for maintaining healthy eyes. Zoria Skin Care from OcuSoft offers revolutionary products for people with sensitive skin and eyes. Thank you to OcuSoft for being the number one doctor-recommended brand of eyelid cleansers 
and providing patients and doctors with products and supplies to continue to keep our eyes healthy. That's really good. I love that. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we've had a conversation with yeah. children. The parents yeah. are there listening to that one. We've talked to the parent. And of course, remember too, the child's listening the whole time we're yeah, talking to the are. parent. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what now can we do to help train, motivate, educate our yeah. staff, our team members so that they can be part of this conversation as well? Yeah, there's so many good resources, April. Um, one that's not made by Cooper Vision is the YouTube video put out by Vox. Uh, they're a, a you know, consumer media outlet, maybe wow. catering to young families a little bit. Uh, but that journalist actually did a seven minute video about myopia you management know. that was very scientifically accurate. And again, compelling with all the visuals, right? Because two out of three of us are visual learners. Um, wow. So having our staff watch that video and be in the exam room with us as the doctor to hear the conversation, to hear the questions that the parents ask. Uh, once you get, again, a three, four, five of those under your belt, then the staff can uh, hopefully be able to handle most of those on their own. And we can, you know, provide frequently asked questions and not to quiz the staff on that, but to really kind of solidify that knowledge. And hopefully your staff have young children that you can treat uh, with myopia control yeah. uh, as well and and really kind of involving them from the early get-go describing to them why it's standard of care um, and you know our yeah. obligation as you said it um, to make sure that every parents right every parent deserves to know yeah, even if right. they don't sign up that day uh, but really that's that's our call to action you know what? It's interesting, Justin, as I listen to you, I'm reminded of how sometimes my staff, my team members, they become more passionate about things like uh, this yeah. than, than even I was <laughs> I when I first heard. <laughs> That's because so they hear this and they would, they're offended. They're upset when a patient comes in and says, I never heard about this before. Yeah. And yeah. I love that about our teams. They listen, they understand, they think about these things as a patient would. Mm -hmm. which makes it even better as they communicate. But here's another thing that I do and I would love to share is that when I, I tell my teams, if you forget what to say, an easy way to cheat is to grab one of the MySight brochures yeah. and you open it up and you can read it pointing to it. That's and, really smart. <laughs> and then nobody knows you didn't know that or nobody knows you forgot it. It looks like you knew it. You just wanted to show them in the brochure. Yeah. And again, it gets back to the visual learner. Now you're uh, utilizing that technique. And I'm glad you brought that up, April, because our MySight brochure is essentially seven questions uh, a parent might be thinking. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So Tell me about something I've heard you speak about before, which is the team huddle. Talk, talk to yeah. me about that and how that could be helpful in this situation. Yeah. So whether a practice does a morning team huddle for five minutes or a weekly team meeting, or uh, when I was in practice, uh, a monthly team meeting, I think it's important to share, I don't want to call it the wins and the losses, but maybe yeah. like a happy, memorable yeah. myopia story. Like we helped this child, they've come yeah. back and shared their, you know, um, ballet performance and all their successes of late. Um, yeah. But also remember to share like a sad, memorable story, right? To kind of really tap into the gravity right. of the situation of myopia as a disease and what it's doing. Um, so once you get that high and the low, you get to celebrate those wins, remember the losses and kind of keep marching forward. Like that's, I think the fuel yeah. that can keep us going. I remember a story, Justin, early on when I was uh, just starting down the road of, of using Paragon CRT lenses, which is your team's oh, lens as yeah. well. And I remember early on that one of the challenges I had was how to answer patients when they came in and the parents would say in a very upset manner, why did nobody tell me about yeah, this before? Yeah, yeah. And I would have to stop and say, okay, well, I, and, and then what I would say is, you know what, it's early, it's new, mm -hmm. not everybody knows about it. So we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Nobody was trying not to tell you. It just yeah. is something not everybody has good information on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could use that excuse 20 years ago, yeah. but today <laughs> we can't say that. <laughs> right. And so it's right. definitely something that is so important. Our staff hear me say the things I say, and it's, I try to make sure that parents don't feel 
also upset because sometimes they come in and their child's a minus three and they're just hearing about these opportunities or these options and they get very, they feel very guilty. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of emotions that we have to manage when we go through this. But I think really the key here is to make sure everybody on your team is educated, have those conversations ready to have in your practice. And as you mentioned on the last podcast we did, Justin, it's not a lengthy conversation anymore. It actually doesn't take much time. Yeah. Uh, another insight from a doctor, he was like, Justin, I really think it, ex- it takes longer to explain cataracts <laughs> than it does myopia management. So I was like, brilliant. Let me yeah. take that and run with it. I was in front of a different two other groups of doctors and I secretly stopped watching them, April. <laughs> I was Woo. like, I'm a 68 year old patient, 20, 30 cataracts how bad is it? What do I need to do? And they started describing, you know, the dirty windshield or the film, oh. like surgery. It took about 54 seconds. No joke. Both times. It's super consistent. Wow. Two different doctors, two different cities, 54 seconds to do the cataracts. And the way we train our doctors to talk about myopia management can be done in as little as eight to 23 seconds. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's good. <laughs> okay. So now we've got a practice that, that gets it. They really are on board. They're having these conversations. Patients' lives are being changed, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they want to also know they're doing it well, and they want to keep track of numbers. Yep. What are some metrics that you would say, because every business is also a business that uh, yeah. they should yeah. be monitoring to make sure they're doing a good job? Yeah. I mean, you're definitely the expert in this category, but I think most ODs have pivoted from revenue per patient to revenue per hour. And when you think yeah. about like that last six o'clock slot before closing, we're not doing a comprehensive eye exam there because we need to get our opticians and everybody out on time. Right. So what if we could put five myopia visits during that hour? Now we're extremely profitable in that yeah. hour. So yeah, number one would be revenue per hour. The other one I was you know, tossing around recently was if you take two age groups, uh, we're going to take 27 to 52 year old adults because conceivably okay. some of them have children <laughs> okay. and then you count all those up. Uh, then you take the kids age, let's say four to 16 years old, something around that age, right? Make that a ratio, right? Because if that ratio is one to one, you're in great shape. You're seeing a lot of kids for every adult, you're seeing a child. And then we know grandparents are part of this picture too, right? Like if you have a practice that's aged with you, as we hear a lot, a lot of your older patients have grandkids as well. So I would just measure that ratio and then also make sure you're seeing at least like three kids a day. Um, because that's what the census is. They're in our community anyways. We see them at Target, you know, playing outside and everything yep. else. Like, why are they not getting eye exams in our practice? So I that's would look good. at that ratio. Good. I, I love the the data. It's important that we keep track of those numbers. I agree. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. love the way you bring it to us, Justin. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now we have everything we need to really be yeah. successful in myopia management. Maybe not everything, but we have a good Almost. kickstart. Yeah. <laughs> what are some, as we close out, what are some resources or some uh, other things that you could point doctors to, to get more information on uh, what yeah. Cooper Vision is doing today for myopia management? Yeah, just a few things, April. I would definitely fully take advantage of the MySite YouTube channel. I right. love showing eight-year-old twins, Olivia and Madeline, teaching other kids insertion and removal of contact lenses that accomplishes so much. It shows eight-year-olds can do it and that maybe the child physically learning it um, is not too young after all. And then the parent gets to see another young child being successful there. So okay. utilize our YouTube channel, uh, that one parent education bifold, as we call it, uh, that's the best visual. You don't need like three different things. I also wouldn't recommend over complicating your doctor parent agreement. I think two pages is plenty, but Possibly because of FDA approval, you may not need an informed consent uh, for my site because it's still the only on label to slow the progression of myopia in those age appropriate children. Um, And yeah, lastly, just again, get started. I I think uh, we need to see success Uh, to take a basketball analogy since it's March Madness. We need to see the ball go through the hoop uh, to keep shooting and and get that confidence back if we've clanked 10 in a row. Right. And even our best doctors, uh, they 
openly confess to me, like, I've heard no five times a day, uh, but the next day I'll hear three yeses. Uh, and that's really kind of the ups and downs of, of yeah. practice. And even like prescribing dry eye treatments, we're not going to get yes every single time, but that's not our duty, right? Our optometric oath right. is to keep consistently, I love how you use the word consistent, uh, consistently educating and prescribing in, in the best way possible. So good. Thank you, Justin. You are amazing. Oh, thank you for thank all you. you do and getting the word out there. We love watching uh, the places you go to uh, get the word out about myopia yeah. management. So thanks for being here on the show as well. Yeah. Uh, thanks, April, for your platform and everything you do for our wonderful profession.